In this video, we're going to do some carburetor testing. Our test engine is Dino Dog with a head giving 11 to 1 compression and a rally cam. For the first three carbs, which are twin choke Webers, we've got a ported standard inlet manifold and a spacer under the carb. And the carbs are SXV6 38D gas, a 40 DFAV, which comes from the really early SXV6s which has got bigger 40 mil throttles and 32 chokes. And finally, the original group one 40 DFAV carb, which again is 40 mil, but with two huge 32 mil chokes. So I'm gonna show you the differences between those three carbs. And then I'm gonna show you what a 390 CFM Holly on a dual port often holds the manifold did. And finally, I'll show you the same engine on a pair of 38 mil choked DCOEs. First up was a baseline, the 38D gas, which made 146 brake horsepower and 134 pound foot of torque. Next up, the 40 DFAV, which made just a couple more brake horsepower at 148 and 135 pound foot of torque. But the DFAV was definitely not happy down the bottom, as you can see. And lastly, the 40 DFI5, biggest of all the twin choke carbs, no real difference to the others. It came in at 147 brake horsepower and 135 pound foot of torque. Again, lacking in low end compared to the 38D gas. So, up next, Holly 390 CFM. And much to my surprise, it didn't really do anything. It made the lowest power of all, 145 brake horsepower, and the weakest torque of all, at 129. Cheers. So, why did the Holly not deliver? Why did it make less power than the twin choke Webers? Surely the big four barrel would have outperformed the smaller Weber twin chokes. But I think the reasoning is the same. Is I think it's the same reason that the 40 DFAV and a 40 DFI 5 barely, in terms of horsepower, outperformed the 38D gas. Simply, the Weber intake manifold wasn't capable of supplying the additional air that the bigger carbs could deliver. So therefore, power basically didn't change. And if you look really hard at the graphs, the 38D gas has the best low down power which makes sense. And it does start to tail off slightly earlier than the rest, but there's so little in it, it's, it's negligible. And I think the reasoning's the same. The intake manifold on the Holly, or the intake manifold I used on this occasion, the often holster, just didn't work. Now, anyone that knows anything about American V8s will realize that most of their intake manifolds are either dual plane or single plane. And by dual plane, we mean half the carburetor feeds one half the engine and the other half of the carburetor feeds the other half of the engine. It picks up low speed power at a slight loss of top end. The alternative is a single plane where all the barrels feed all the cylinders. And effectively, that's what the standard fault manifold is a single plane. But this often holds a manifold is never dual plane nor single plane. It's dual port. And that means they put a divider up the middle of the manifold. And each half is fed by all the carburetor. And I think in this case it's just such a convoluted, awkward shape that 
the manifold will not flow sufficient air for the engine to make use of the big carburetor. And if you look at the graph in green from the holly, it would appear that the holly actually gives much better low down power below where we tested. So I think had we been able to get hold of a Wyan dual plane manifold, I think the holly would have outperformed the twin check Webbers. But I still only think by a negligible amount. Now there might be those amongst you going, well, yeah, but is the engine up to it? Can the motor deliver? Well, just to answer that, I'm now going to put the graph up or back, put the graph back up. But this time I'm going to add in Dyna Run on the same engine, on the same day, but this time with the 45 DCOEs. And you'll see a considerable jump in power. So clearly, had the four barrel and Holly been able to deliver the goods, the engine would have made more power. And on that bombshell, I'll bid you good night. Catch you next time.